is your girl, Rosita Cooper. Today, my special guest is Trey Chaney. You may know him from Bounce TV show, The Saints and Sinners, or HBO TV series, The Wire. So stay tuned. You do not want to miss this next on Living Your Dreams with Rosita. Hi everyone, this is your girl Rosita Cooper and I am here with Trey Chaney from The Wire and Saints and Sinners. How are you? I'm doing great, Rosita. I'm so glad to be able to be on this show, man. Living your dreams, living in your dreams. I'm, I'm so honored to be on here. Thank you. I am honored to have you on the show. I've been trying to get you on here for over a year. You know, so finally, you know, this virus thing. This I, know, I know I'm I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad we finally were able to catch up. Exactly. So you're doing some awesome things in the industry. And I know we was on the set together. I know we can't mention the set, you know, but what, like uh, a month or two right before the yeah. virus hit, you know, so I, I see you everywhere. Right. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so tell yeah. us about... I'm all over the place. Like, I right. know. I know. That's an awesome thing. Congratulations on everything that you're doing. I'm proud of you. I want to say that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so tell us Thank about... You. Thank Saints you. Saints and Sinners. Was the, uh, Bravo is with Saints and Sinners on. Okay, so tell us about your part on that. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Bounce TV... You know, uh, Saints and Sinners is Bounce TV's number one show. And, and um, you know, I was cast for Saints and Sinners, I want to say back in 2015. Uh, shout out to George Pierre Casting uh, and Swirl Films, of course. You know, all of the producers and executives over there. Um, but I played the character Kendrick Murphy. I played Clifton Powell and Vanessa Bell Calloway's son on the show. And, you know, for anybody that's familiar with Saints and Sinners, it's, you know, a show that takes place in Cyprus, Georgia. You know, you, you got all of these different personalities and these characters that go to church, but they're one way in church, but off, you know, when they're not in church, they're a different way. So it's almost like yeah. you got saints on one hand and, and sinners, but I, I can't even really say saints. I think everybody on the show is saints. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm very happy. To, to be a part of the show, you know, it's, it's been four amazing seasons. And right now, you know, with everything that's going on with the COVID-19 pandemic, we're trying to, you know, figure out how it, or if, you know, a season five is coming, which is, you know, everything is up in the air right now just because of what's going on with the pandemic. Okay, because one of my fans, that was going to be one of my questions. One of my fans contacted me and asked, uh, told me yeah. to ask you, was there going to be a season five? So you answered that. So, okay. Right. <laughs> so how did you like being on that uh, set right there? The 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 Saints thing and the, the, the Sinners thing? Well, it was... Well, it was... It was it was amazing, you know, like I said, just being able to um, have Clifton Powell, Vanessa Bell Calloway play my parents, you know, those, that type of caliber of, of actors and actresses, it's like, you know, it, it was mind blowing. And, you know, on screen, they, they gave me so much knowledge and wisdom about the business of being an actor. And they, you know, they almost served as like my acting coaches, you know, and, and even off screen, I still consider you know, everybody on the set family, you know, we still all keep in touch. We have real close knit relationships, you know, as far as uh, the cast and crew and, and, and everybody, it's just a great professional set to work on. And um, like I said, just, just working around them it has been, has been an amazing honor and pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I don't truly believe that I experienced that myself working on set. That's how me and you became clear. You know, working on sets and exactly. just kind of real close to people that is on set. And I've become friends with a lot of people that I've met on set. They like family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most definitely. Okay, so tell us about HBO's The Wire. Well, The Wire, um, a lot of people, you know, whoever d doesn't know, now they will. I played the character Poop on The Wire for all five seasons. The Wire kicked off in 2002 and lasted all the way into 2008. I did five seasons on the show. And a lot of people 
you know, don't know that The Wire was actually my first audition, first television gig I ever booked as an actor. You know, it was my first job. And, and just to, um, I'm, I'm originally from, you know, Forestville, Maryland, Washington, D.C. To, so shout out to the whole DMV. So being able to film HBO's The Wire in Baltimore, which was only like 30, 45 minutes from where I lived at anyway, was definitely a blessing. And I, I really feel, you know, not just because I was on it, but The Wire is definitely one of the most uh, historically groundbreaking, uh, critically acclaimed television shows of all time. Oh, and um, just to, you know, be a part of that was was definitely an honor. I think I can speak for all of the cast members. None of us knew that The Wire was going to be as big as it is today. We're talking about, you know, 18 years later, you know, and um, just being able to be a part of history and, and playing the character Malik Kukar for five seasons uh, was totally an honor and a pleasure. I was only supposed to be in the first episode in the first season, but, you know, shout out to the creator, David Simon and the producers, you know, Nina Noble and, and Ed Burns and, and all of the great people that worked over there at HBO and, and just the production standing all five seasons. So that was that was a blessing. You know, to this day I'll never be able be able to escape the name poop. <laughs> you know, but it's all love. You know, I'm a part of history, so it's great. And see, I can imagine them taking you from this supposed to be on one season and yeah. you on all of them because I have actually worked with you and you're an yeah. awesome actor. <laughs> you know? I appreciate that, Rosita. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So you deserve everything that you have got. You worked for it. It ain't like you no know, handout, hey, I knew this person that got on that. You have actually, you got the talent for everything that you're doing. Yeah, and um, you know, that's another point. You know, being an actor in this business, being a hip hop artist, uh, it, it it acquires you have to have dedication and commitment. You know, being dedicated to the craft of an actor or as a hip hop artist and, and being committed, that's very important because sometimes, you know, being in this business, work might slow down. You know, like for instance, with everything that's going on with COVID-19, coronavirus pandemic, work has slowed down. Yeah. But that doesn't mean, you know, Trey Cheney is going to slow down. You know, I, I still have to stay dedicated and committed to the craft, whether I'm reading books on acting or looking at some of my favorite actors on YouTube and plays or in movies and really just, you know, uh, getting that training and getting that knowledge and studying. And um, even, you know, being an artist, you know, just, just writing music every single day, you know, not letting a day go past where I'm not constantly, you know, sharpening my skills or, or perfecting my craft. You know, I'm just, I'm in this. I'm, I'm not just in this for a short period of time. I'm in this for the long run, you know, and, and that's what a lot of artists and, you know, actors and, you know, musicians have to understand. This is not just when we feel like doing the work you know the work has to be a consistent exactly type of situation. It's, just like, we got it's just like they're saying that people say uh i'm not into music i am music you know it's like living exactly what you do I, I made that point the other day when i put up a post about you know with, with music people we have to get out of the habit of saying i do music you know, it's more so we have to show results. You know, as an artist, as a hip hop artist, mm -hmm. it's about results. Everybody in the world does music. Exactly. But at the same time, you know, these industry vets and these executives, they want to see what are you actually doing? Are you are you writing music? Are you in the studio? Are you putting your songs on all digital streaming platforms? Are you shooting videos? Are you being yeah. creative even during this coronavirus, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. You still have to show that you hustling and grinding every single day. You know and, what I'm saying? you so, really want it, yes. Yeah, it, it, it ha the passion has to be there. That's one thing that I'm glad was instilled in me at the early age of eight mm -hmm. years old. I've always been passionate about what I wanted to do. I can honestly say 
um, you know, some of the YouTube footage that people see when I was dancing after Apollo at eight years old, I knew what I wanted to do. I'm, you know, you're talking over 30 years later, I'm still in the business. I'm still doing what people seen me doing at eight years old as far as being an entertainer. I'm an actor and I'm an artist, period. You know, I was gonna ask you about that. I see that you started at eight years old for his dancing and music and stuff. So tell us about that and tell us what inspired you to do what you're doing. Well, you know, well, you know, just growing up in, you know, Forestville, Maryland, Washington, DC, shout out to where I'm from, you know, the city that, that really made me who I am today. I always my upbringing was was very positive you know I, I came up with both of my parents shout out to you know skip and elaine cheney my mom and dad and in my household it was always music it was always dancing it was it was always just anything you could think of as far as the arts are concerned and, and i that's definitely where i got my inspiration from but once i started to you know really get serious about dancing and, and rapping my you know my parents along with my uncle my uncle jimmy they they really supported me and um that's why you know when you see me at the apollo uh the the clips that you see is just me on stage but you best believe in that audience my whole entire family was big so just the the upbringing and the the, the support system that i had with the family family I, I was just on Facebook and I did a live video and I was talking about support from family and friends. And, and I was explaining yeah. that everything that a person does when they step out on faith into this industry or a career or a business adventure, it's not just about them. It's about everybody that they care about. They want to take care of. They want to do something for. Yeah. And support means so much to them just to say congratulations or be happy for them and there's a lot of people yeah. don't get that and it actually hurts you know it can put a damper in what they're trying they could be so much better just by the family and friends believing in it i feel you yeah and I, and that's one thing that that's one thing that i had i had the support um to this day i still got the support once i got a little older i, I want to say maybe like around 18 19 years old my parents were almost like, you know, well, we're going to see what you can pretty much do on your own. So mm -hmm. I had to, I had to prove myself, you know, to my family. And that's when, you know, I, I worked, I worked little jobs like Subway, JC Penney's just to save up money to, you know, pay for my own head shots. And, mm -hmm. and I submitted, I submitted myself along with um, Linda Townsend Talent Management uh, to The Wire. You know, I submitted for that. I remember driving myself to the audition okay. to the wire. I remember my car breaking down and, and having to get my car fixed on the road and still being able to make the audition within a, you know, reasonable time. And, you know, it, it just, like I said, again, it, it goes back to an actor or an artist being fully 100% committed and dedicated to the craft, regardless of the circumstance. Cause it's always going to be things and roadblocks that, that yeah. come and try to throw you off course, yeah. but you got to stay the course. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can't, you can't get into this business if you don't have, if you don't have commitment and dedication. Exactly. Exactly. And I know you appreciate your parents for actually letting you go through what you needed to do for yourself. Because like my dad always said, yeah. you appreciate things more when you put your foot down to actually get it done instead of being that's a fact because a, a lot of stuff that's handed to the kids and stuff they take advantage of it and they don't take it serious because it came too easy yeah you know exactly <laughs> and, and, and that's what i can i can i can speak towards that as well um nothing was handed to me mm -hmm. like i said even when I re like I said, I remember driving in my car breaking down on the way to the audition for The Wire. I did not let that stop me. You know, uh, I was fortunate that my parents had, you know, the insurance and they had roadside assistance come and, yeah. and fix the car, whatever or whatever it needed to be done. And and I still made the audition in time. And you know, we, we looking we looking at eighteen years later. You know, that that's a that's a true testimony. I didn't let anything. That 
anything get in my way of stopping me from auditions or showing up to do concerts or shows. I just, I, I am a different kind of beast. I'm a different yeah. type of hustler. Yeah. And when I want something, I'm going 100% <laughs> to get that. Exactly. So tell us about the movie, uh, The Salon. You was on The Salon with yeah. Vivica Fox. Okay, yeah, shout out to Vivica Fox. Yeah, um, you know what? That was during my days when I was shooting The Wire out there in um, Baltimore. And I remember, you know, uh, getting a call that Vivica Fox was casting and also starring in and producing a film called The Salon. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was just it was just an honor to, to go in there and read for that role, get casted for it. And um, I don't consider no part uh too small or too big i had a nice little little role in it and um i was able to meet vivica and it's so funny because that moment came full circle when i was able to see vivica a couple of months ago in las vegas we we hosted a, a show that, that was actually honoring her and um okay. just to you know bring that up and, and had that full circle moment and to be able to thank her for yeah. a movie that she just, you know, she she casted me for that movie. Oh, and I, I watched was that movie like ten times. I love that movie because yeah, I do I, hair too. So anything about barbershops, salons, and all of that, I mean, so yeah. it's <laughs> just just being able to have that full circle moment with you know Miss Vivica Fox and thank her and say you know thank you for giving me that opportunity. Now look, you know I'm I'm still in the business, you know, and and, and that's one thing that a lot of my mentors in the business, you know, like Clifton Powell, Big Daddy Kane, that, that's one thing that I really appreciate about having that caliber of artists in, in my circle because they know, they know my journey. They know when I started, you know, and, and to see me now working with them, like right beside them, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, they always tell me, they're like, man, Trey, be real proud of you. And, and at first, you know, when, when you hear stuff like that, you acknowledge it and, and you, you say things. But now I understand what they actually see. You know, they, they with them telling me Clifton Powell and Big Daddy Kane and Vivica Fox and people of that caliber saying that they're proud of me, I understand why. Because I never gave up. Yeah. I never gave up on my dream. They These people seen me years ago grinding, you know, even after the wire ended in the streets of D.C. all the way up until now you know, being on Saints and Centers and, and doing all of the other projects that I'm doing that I include them in a lot, mm -hmm. you know. So I understand the the joy and the happiness, you know, because I would feel the same way about somebody who I might be mentoring right now, years down the road, I see that they still in the business and they still doing their thing. So I, I just, I, I definitely got to just, you know, I, I, I humbly accept all of that. You know, I humbly accept the congratulations and, and honors and, and everything that I've been getting yes. for the past couple of years. Yes. Okay, so, and also you on another movie um, where Meek, Meek Mill is co star Huh? It, ain't you on another movie where Meek Mills was co star yeah, Okay, so Yeah, shout out to Meek Mill. I played in the film Streets. Um, okay, Streets. Street. Yeah. You know, Aired on BET. It, it had a Netflix national distribution release, and and um, it was very fun doing that. Jamal Hill uh, was the you know the the writer, um, director. Shout out to Todd Wolf. Shout out to Charlie Mack. All of my Philadelphia homeboys out there. I was in the film with Meek Mill, Gilly the Kid, uh, Nafisa Williams, who plays on Black Lightning, um, and Emilio Sparks. You know, just a whole bunch of my Philadelphia friends, you know, just being able to travel from D.C. and go out there and film that with Meek Mill, it was definitely an honor and a pleasure. I still get, you know, a lot of people coming up to me saying how much that they love my role in the film Streets. So, I mean, I, that was dope to work on. And, you know, I still, I just did a movie actually with Todd Wolf. It's called We Need to Talk. And um, I shot that in Philly last year. And so we're, we're getting all that together now for, for that to come out. Nice. So do you run across a lot of people that didn't realize that you actually rap? Um, you know what? I guess now that it's 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 this is like my eighth year. I've been I'm talking about as far as like me putting out 
releases and stuff like that. I've been rapping all my life, but at the yeah. same time, 2012 was when, you know, BT 106 and Park and they started picking up my content. They started picking yeah. up the videos and, and, you know, I, I started dropping releases on iTunes, Tidal, Spotify, Apple Music. So I think, you know, just my consistency with getting people familiar with what I do as far as being an artist. Because my really, thing is, go ahead, what you were saying. No, nah, I was saying it's really starting to stick, man, because I'm yeah. being consistent with it. Because you know? I, my thing was, I, I knew you act, and I'm like, okay, he's an awesome actor. And then one day I'm on Instagram, mm -hmm. and then I see you rapping, I'm like, Okay, he's good at rapping too. <laughs> and it's just like uh, when I interviewed yeah. Headcrack. Yeah. And Headcrack is a rapper, but he was like, people don't realize that's I what I do best. You know? <laughs> but, you know, that's an awesome thing yeah, to be multi talented. I mean, I started, like. Yeah, I started, I started in music. So um, it, it's just, you know, sometimes the world, they see, you know, <laughs> that different side as far as. With, yeah, what they seen with me, which was yeah. acting, and yeah. with the wire being such a huge success, and and majority of all the projects that I've worked on have have seen national releases on television, BET, Netflix, TV One, and um, you know, my some of my projects that I'm recognized for as an actor have got that attention. So sometimes when you're introducing something like music. It, it's like, oh, I didn't know you did that because I was so familiar with what you did yeah. as an actor. But, but like I said, with, with me, it, with music, I'm not trying to be like no other artist. I'm being myself. I'm, I'm yeah. writing from the heart. I'm writing from my personal experience on drum. And I think that's what people appreciate. People appreciate my music because I tell the truth in the music. Yeah. You know, and they and, and they can relate. They can relate to, you know, some of the records or whatever. So it's just exactly. been I listen to some of your raps and stuff on Instagram. I'm like, okay, he's good. I sit there and watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I appreciate that. It's been a ride. You know, I dropped 17 music videos on my dedicated father series YouTube page. Like I got a YouTube page, anybody. That's out there listening right now. Dedicated Father Series YouTube pages out. All seventeen of my music videos. Anything Trey Chang you want to know, it's on there. You know, so it's it's been a real, real great like movement. You know, I, I've been I've been able to tour with some of the biggest artists in the game: Big Daddy Kane, Rock Kim, Slick Rick, Snoop Dogg. Shout out to all of the legends that I've ever toured and opened for: Genuine, Velvet DeVoe. Bobby Brown, it's just been, it's been a ride. You know, I've been around some of the best nice, in the business. Nice. Okay, well, you know, on Living Your Dreams with Rosita, I always have a testimonial part to where yeah. I, I like for whoever I'm interviewing to help me inspire other people to follow their dreams or either not give up on living your dreams. So yeah. this right here, I want you to tell a testimonial part of something that happened to you in your life. You can go all the way back to when you was a child that basically okay. almost made you want to give up on what you're doing yeah. and how you got past. Okay. Well, my testimony is when The Wire ended in 2008, mm -hmm. I didn't get consistent work as an actor or a hip hop artist for, I wanna say, seven years. So that's enough time to make somebody say, either you're gonna keep going or you're gonna give up. So I had a choice. Mm -hmm. um, what I did was once the wire ended in 2008, I decided to take matters into my own hand. Meaning I used the wire as a stepping stone because people knew who I was on an international level because of the show. So I said, I'm going to link up with more independent artists. I'm going to link up with writers, directors, producers, uh, filmmakers, people that really know the logistics and, and, and really are internet savvy and, and have ways to edit, shoot films. And I started creating my own content. You know, I started creating my own content in 2009, 2010. And I stood on the corner of Washington, D.C., uh, and sold 
my merchandise out the trunk of my car. I did what most actors and artists wouldn't do if they were on a big national hit show like The Wire. So mm -hmm. that's the key point right there that I want to make to anybody that's watching right now. I did what other artists or actors would not do. You know, being on that corner every day, it was days that I did not make a dime. Mm -hmm. But again, the commitment, the dedication, it kicked in every single time. Mm -hmm. I didn't care whether I made $100, $1,000, or sometimes a dollar, or sometimes nothing. Mm -hmm. I still was committed. I still always had the dream saying, I'm going to make it, regardless of the circumstances. I was willing to swim in the mud. I did. You know, so it, it, it's almost like if, you know, if I wouldn't have had the experience of really touching the people and being up close and personal and having that direct connection, standing on the corners of Forsville, Merlin, Washington, D.C., I wouldn't be speaking to you today because I wouldn't have had no type of testimony and I could have probably gave up yeah. like anybody would do in that circumstance. Yeah. So my, 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 my main point right now, my main testimony is the roadblocks in this business are going to come. The storm is going to come, but staying fully committed and staying dedicated and really striving for your dreams, that's what counts. You know, because at any given time years ago, I could have gave up, but I decided to not give up. And that's why I'm here today. That's right. All right. Okay, so give us some inspiring words that you feel as though that somebody can take with them for the rest of their lives right now. Um, some inspiring words that I feel somebody can take with them for the rest of their lives is, first of all, is, is four words that nobody should use in their vocabulary, and that's bad, can't, need, or try. You know, those four words, bad, can't, need, or try. Those four words is uh, four words that people need to erase totally out of their vocabulary. Because you got to understand, nothing dark tunnel. And we have to also understand we don't need anything as human beings. We actually have everything we want. If it's something that we desire, we just got to continue to work towards it and continue to get it. When you say you can't do something, you're automatically setting yourself up for failure. Yes. We can do anything we want to do in life as long as it's positive. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to, we want to get out of using the word try. When mm -hmm. people say, I'm trying to do something, they're automatically setting themselves up for failure because mm -hmm. they're already looking at what if it doesn't work. Exactly. Instead of saying you're going to try to do something, you have to become more of a doer. You have to do. I'm somebody who doesn't, I never say, I'll try this. I go do it. And if I fall on my face, I fall on my face. That's a part of the game. Exactly. But the mentality I got is that beast mentality. You got to have a beast mentality, a dog mentality, a war mentality. Yeah. And you got to go get it. That's right. That's my it. daddy told me and my brothers when we was little, he said, if anything could be done, you can do it. And if you're not going to do it right, don't do it at all. Exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and people have to understand that. You're going to fall on your face, but you got to keep going. You got to almost, you got to almost become crazy. And I'm not trying to say that in a bad way. You yeah. got to be so crazy about this business. Like for me, I eat, breathe, and sleep the business. I don't want to be like nobody else. Mm -hmm. I want you to beat of my own drum. Exactly. And I go get it. If it don't happen today, if it don't happen it's tomorrow, happen. if it don't happen next year, it's going to happen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. I hope y'all take heed to what he just said because he just gave y'all some million dollars, you know, 
uh, shoot, listen. Shout out to my brother, the million dollars worth of game. That's my boy. Exactly. <laughs> million dollar word of the today. That can actually, if people put forth in what you just said, it can actually change their yeah. life. You know, it's it's a, that's a people fact. talk themselves out of stuff. It's a lot of people speak negative things into their life. Like you said, saying that I'm going to try. If you say that I'm going to try, that means that you might do it right or you might not. Okay, I'm going to do it, but that's I don't exactly, feel like it. Exact, <laughs> when people say they going to try something, they automatically look at the downside of it might not work. Me, I don't care. Yes. I make it happen. I don't I mean I don't care when when it happens, it's gonna happen. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So yeah, Rotita, I just wanna thank you though, because I've been seeing you, you know, I checked out some of the interviews on here and I really I really appreciate and like what you're doing, you know, giving thank us you. artists and actors and you know, poets and, and writers that records a, a platform to speak on, you know, living in your dreams, living out your dreams, living for your dreams. It's, it's a real good platform that you've created. And um, you keep it up, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you never know, man. I mean, these type of joints right here, they, they really touch a lot of people and people need to, people really need to um, support you with, with stuff like this. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate no you. I appreciate your kind words. I appreciate you being on the show. Yeah. I am so, so honored of you being on the show. And I know that Thank your you. testimony and everything that you just said is going to touch a lot of people and is going to inspire a lot of people. And that's what this show is. Yeah, about. I can't wait. I can't wait till this comes out because I, I really want to post this and get people to knowing about the show a little bit more. And, and I want to try to, you know, get more guests on your show for them to speak. Um, shout out to my brother Uji Leo. He's getting ready to drop his album Audio Love, and I want him to get on here and talk to you, give you an exclusive oh, so. interview. So, um, okay. if we can get this to you know ASAP, like today or the, you know tonight, oh, whatever. Have I'm it gonna, today, honey. Yeah, you know, I, I, put this I out. am my team. I do everything. <laughs> yeah, let's make it happen then. I want to put this yeah. thing out, but I know I got a conference call in the next five seconds. So I'm gonna um, I definitely appreciate the love. Okay, thank you so much. And y'all remember, let no one and nothing stop you from following your dreams. Peace and love, peace and blessings. Peace. Peace.